let me show you why AG Grid is becoming the de facto data grid. So let's go to the aggrid.com website and I'm going to go full screen. And I'll click on the demo page. Here we have an AG Grid example that's pretty fully featured. You don't need to have all of these features here in your application. Everything that you see here can be turned off so you can give a simplistic grid to your users. But here we want to showcase so a lot of the things are turned on. So first some grid basics. We can do some sorting, sort by one column, sort by two columns, sort the opposite direction, turn sort off. We can move columns around by dragging them around with the mouse. We can move groups of columns around by dragging at the group level. And some columns are inside groups where we hit the expand button to see them and then contract to hide them again. Let's look at filtering. Up here we've got the quick filter. If I put in Tony, it'll search in the first column for Tony. Or I can put in a second word to filter across two columns. Here I'm filtering Tony and Jess. I've also got filter at the column level. Here I can open up the column filter for country and pick different countries. Here again you can see the smoothness of the operations as rows are coming in and out. The other rows are scrolling into position. We like to give an Excel type feel to the grid. One thing we like is a range selection here. As I select a range, you'll notice the values on the bottom right are updating. A lot of the time, people will export data from your application just to bring it into Excel so they can do a range selection like this. If you can do this inside your app, people will stay inside your application and stop going to Excel. I can also do Control c to copy and Control v to paste. All the grid is fully editable. The grid is really highly performant. To show that, let's put in 100,000 rows. So the grid now has 100,000 rows in it, and you'll see that the scrolling is extremely smooth. I can even grab the scroll handle here and bring it all the way down to the bottom, and it just goes up and down, and no problems at all. Sorting and filtering are just as smooth as well. So 100,000 rows, no problem to AG grid whatsoever. The grid's also fully themable. Out of the box, it comes with a few different themes. Here I can see the dark theme, the material theme, or I can turn the themes off completely so the user can add its own CSS. Okay, so you've got to ask, what's the use of having a data grid with 100,000 rows in it? The answer is, it's not very useful because nobody's going to look down through 100,000 rows. So what do you do? That's where grouping and aggregations come in. So with the columns, I can drag them around as we saw. But what I'm going to do now is bring this country column over to the group drop zone and let go. And here you can see that the grid has grouped all of these rows inside the browser. Each of these numbers in brackets here indicate how many rows are inside this group. So inside France, there's 20,898 rows. I can expand the group to see these rows. I can group by as many columns as I like. So let's go ahead and group by language. Bring it before country because countries fall into languages. I can also group by game name. And lastly, I'll group by bot. The grouping again is done by the browser almost instantly here over four levels. Now it would be great to get some values up here, so let's do some aggregations. For these aggregations, you're going to use the monthly breakdown columns, so bring this over to the left hand side. I picked these columns because there's nice numbers here to do aggregations with. To get the aggregations up at the group level, we bring the monthly breakdown down to the value section and let go. Voila! And now the grid is grouped those 100,000 records on the fly inside the browser. The group values up here are kept up to date as updates happen. So if I'm to change the data down here, you'll see the values flashing and updating in the group levels relevant to those values. I now want to show you pivoting, so I'm going to clear down all of the grouping. I'm now going to click on pivot mode. In pivot mode, you must bring the data in you want to group, pivot, and aggregate by, just like an Excel pivot table. So let's pivot by language to get things started. It has now created columns in what used to be rows. So English, French, German, etc. used to be values in different rows, now they've been represented by columns. Pivoting only makes sense when there is an aggregation presence. So let's drag down Jan into the values. The grid is now aggregated to January figures pivoted by language. Just with row grouping, we can pivot by as many columns as we like. So let's bring country up and drop it after language. So here now it's pivoting in two dimensions. For example, we can see here that French is a column group and below it it has three countries. Belgium, France and Luxembourg, all that speak French. And we can mix row grouping with pivoting. So let's bring game name over and drop it to the row group section. And bring bot over and drop that into the row group section also. So here we can see the row groups on the left hand side, the pivots along by the top, and all of the aggregation values in the center. 
Now, if you've used other data grids, you'll realize that this just is not possible in any other JavaScript data grid. You will get some pivot grids that just do pivoting and nothing else. But with AG grid, you get the pivot, aggregate, group, sort, filter, range select, absolutely everything is together in one grid. All the features work alongside each other. OK, let's get out of pivot mode. And let me show you charting. Let's select a range, right click, go to chart, pick a chart type, and click. The grid has generated a chart on the fly. Now let me point something out. This example has got zero charting code in it. All of the charting is done by the grid. It comes out of the box. There's no code needed by the developer to integrate the charting with the grid. An application using AG Grid can get this charting capability by the developer just adding one attribute to the grid, which is enable charts. The charting comes packed with functionality. Let me change the range here. You can see the charting is updating on the fly. The axis here is showing numbers because I don't have a category picked. Let me pick a category by going into the chart properties. Here I can see categories and I'll pick country. So it picks the country column or it could pick game name. The game names look a bit squashed down here. So let's go into the format. Let's go into the axis. Let's go down to the x-axis and change it slightly. Cool. There's lots of different things you can change with the properties here. We can change the position of the legend. Or we can give it a title. And then the chart types. There is lots of different chart types to pick from. Bars, pies, donuts, scatters, areas, etc. And then for all the different chart types, we've got the different palettes to change the colors. The chart's a PNG, so we can right-click and choose Copy Image to put it into an email, or we can choose Download, and it downloads the chart locally. Okay, let's close down the chart, let's go into Pivot Mode, and let's bring up a pivot chart. Pivot charts build up as you add stuff to the grid. So let's bring some data over. Let's bring Language and Country, and bring down two values. You can see the chart is building up on the fly. If we expand one of these, say English, you can see the chart alters. And let's do the same for French. That's pretty cool. And we can also pivot. So this integration of the charts and the grid, if I could be a small bit modest, it's kind of pretty awesome. It's cool. OK, let's talk about frameworks a small bit. You can see here that this grid's customized. The country column has some customization in the cells, where the cell is showing the country flag and the country name. Likewise, the rating, that's not showing text either. That's showing some stars. That's done with cell components. You can provide a component in any framework that you like, and AG Grid will put it into the cell for you. So for country, we've configured this with a component for displaying country flags and country names. Again, this could be an Angular component, a React component, a Vue component. With every framework you want to use, we will allow you to customize the grid using that framework. To see all the different areas of the grid that you can customize, go to the documentation, go to components, and here we can see renderers, editors, date components, filter components, header components, etc., etc. As well as customizing the grid, the grid itself will be exposed as a component in the framework of your choice. The grid has zero dependencies, so if you're using the vanilla version of AG Grid, the grid will not pull any third-party dependencies into your application. However, if you want to use Angular or React, we will provide a component for that framework for AG Grid. So we have an Angular component for AG Grid, a React component for AG Grid, etc., etc. And for each of those, if you go to our Getting Started page, you will see a step-by-step -step guide on how to use AG Grid inside that framework. Now lastly, there's two more features I want to show you that weren't on the demo page. The first one is streaming data. The best place to see that is to go back to our main homepage, and there's a real kick-ass example down here, live streaming updates. What we see here is a grid with 10,000 rows. Those rows are aggregated by the grid across these three columns, product, portfolio, and book. As well as having the 10,000 rows, there are 1,000 updates per second coming into the grid. The grid is aggregating all of the data as the updates are coming in, keeping all of the group levels up to date. While all of this processing is happening, the grid is still very, very functional, very interactive. It does not slow down. So if you work in finance and you think you need to use a canvas-based grid to get this type of performance, well, you're wrong. And then further down, we see a similar example, but it's also got a chart that's updating with the updates as well. And then lastly, a grid can hold as much data as you can fit in the browser, which is about 100,000 records. What if you want to start looking at millions or billions of records? What happens then? Well, that's exactly what our service at Roam models for. Let me show you.
Let me take off the grouping to get started. Here we've got a flat data set with about 8,000 records, but you'll notice the scroll doesn't go down as 8,000. It only goes down as 100 because the browser, because the grid is only pulled back the first 100 records. As I scroll down to the bottom, you'll notice that it brings back more. Watch the last row down here as I scroll down again. You can see a loading icon appears and it brings back more rows. This is what's called infinite scroll. It's a common feature. Other grids have this. But we take it a step further. We allow grouping and pivoting and aggregation. Let me show you. Let's go back to the top. That's grab country, and it's now grouping by country. This grouping is happening on the server side, and the server is sending back the top level rows. When I expand the group, for example, I'm going to expand United States now, then the children are lazy loaded from the server. And as before, if the data is bigger than 100 rows, for example, United States does have more than 100 children. When I scroll down to the bottom, it will lazy load the next block. I can group by as many columns as I like, so let's bring athlete up here. And I can also pivot, so let's turn on pivot mode and bring year over to the pivot drop zone. Wow. So with this technique, AG Grid can work on massive amounts of data and give the user experience to the user as if the data is loaded inside their browser. So this is allowing your application to almost act like a powerful BI tool with very large data sets. That's pretty, pretty cool. But remember, all of this is optional. If all you want is a simple little grid with about five columns and customize the cells with Angular or React, you can use AG Grid for that as well. Maybe simple users of your app will use the simple features, and then you can have more complex features for the more advanced users. OK, lastly, pricing. AG Grid is two flavors, AG Grid Community and AG Grid Enterprise. Community is absolutely free, MIT license. You never need to even tell us that you're using it. AG Grid Enterprise starts at about $1,200 per developer. That comes with more features and comes with support. To see the features that are available only in Enterprise, go to our documentation and look for this E symbol here. Those features are available only in AG Grid Enterprise. The others are free and open source. Well, I hope you found this useful. If not, at least you got to laugh at my funny little Irish accent. Take care.